up YouTube fam so I'm all covered in glitter as you saw I've been uh, shaping our motor mounts for the Yamasaki KX500 and as I, I I need to choose my words carefully here as I was massaging the upper engine mounts I know the lens is super dirty right now so I was massaging the upper mounts it didn't occur to me the shape of the motor mount in contouring and what it would reveal. Don't have a dirty mind. Boys and girls, we have succeeded in making some upper engine, engine mounts that look a little bit like a love missile. I'm not gonna lie. So, Project Love Missile. <laughs> oh, guys. Now I'm all upset because I got my Reverend Motor shirt completely covered in stripper glitter, metal shavings. <sighs> it's alright though. As you can see, I wore eye protection. Maybe not ANSI approved, but uh, you know, they work. So good. Today, uh, some of you saw in the last video that we're paying attention. Let me get this little smudge because it's bothering me just looking at the lens. How are you doing? A little bit more? There we go. So, if you guys are paying attention to the last episode, our buddy Chad Struthers met me at the uh, Two Stroke Championship down in Glen Helen. Oh, this is going to be days to get this all off. Uh, and he hooked us up with uh, some Cerakote. He goes by SS Cerakote on Instagram. So, again, thank you, Chad, for doing that. So, guys, we have some burnt bronze, which, <laughs> let's face it, like, that's the color, right? Everyone's doing. And uh, armor black, the other color everyone's doing. So, guys, we have gone down. I even have it in my mouth. Um, we went down to Harbor Freight, Princess Auto of the States. We got ourselves, this is my setup here, okay? So, we've got our water separator, dryer, whatever, yeah? Now, the gun itself has a, a pressure regulator on it, but I wanted to see so I hope I can play with the pressure a little bit more. But this whole setup right here, I mean, this quality setup, right? 30 bucks using a 20% off coupon that they so lovingly email you that clogs up your email every month. Oh, man, it's everywhere. So, guys, today... <coughs> lungs too um we are going to do a little different step than uh everyone else has done in the past so i've watched now a couple videos on uh seracoding and everyone kind of has their own approach the the definite premise of all of these though is a part has to be immaculately clean so what we are going to do to our fabricated love missile here <coughs> we are going to Vapor hone it in our LMS blasting cabinet. We are going to, I, I, first backup, we're going to degrease in simple green. Then we're going to throw it in our LMS blasting innovations cabinet and get those all vapor honed. And then we're going to soak them in acetone for 10 to 15 minutes. Then we're going to bake them in. So your boy went to the thrift store yesterday. And well, that yielded a toaster oven. Or two, one's covered in aluminum shavings. I have two toaster ovens for the mat. Like, come on, that price, guys. Five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. I got two of them basically for twelve bucks, right? So we're gonna do. I already took off brake pedal, rear brake hanger, and then our love missiles. Right here, guys. I seriously did not think about the design flaw there um but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna seracote these and i think i'm just gonna leave this nice and lumpy like that you know what i mean too bad i didn't curve a little yeah you know, never mind this is getting out of control so we're gonna vapor hone these degrease these acetone these i i need to actually degrease them in simple green first and then yeah we'll get started like literally my pocket is full of metal. Oh, 
my watch. <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, so we're going to throw these things uh, in our vapor home now. Get these things clean. Look at the watch. Just look at the watch. Look at the throttle watch. Oh, by the way, just because on the topic. So uh, you guys know two videos ago, um, I showed you guys these watches. I've been using this thing every single day. And uh, my favorite is the uh, black and the Yamaha blue or navy blue as it's listed on the side. But as you can tell, it's like Yamaha blue. Uh, the, the Yamaha blues, they've been flying off the shelf off of uh, the throttle timepieces store. Um, don't forget, guys, you got to use code LUNDMX to save you 20% on these things. Because, yeah, these things are going to sell out really soon. And we don't know when we're going to have another batch made. Uh, but these things have just been killing it online, um, as well as the Heritage, which is like the, the GT Cobra looking one with the bands. Uh, but all of them are, are selling awesome. But this one, guys, um, if you're any Yamaha fans out there that want a quality timepiece, I mean, you guys could use these to work. The bands are super comfortable. Get on to throttle timepieces and order yourself one. I'm going to take this thing off before I destroy it. <laughs> oh, let's get back to work. So... Just a reminder what they look like before. All hammered out. And then don't forget our love missiles. Know what I'm saying? Get these things dialed. All right, now we got our parts all vapor home. Look how brand new those things look. Dude, that LMS Blasting Innovations vapor home cabinet is the stuff, guys. So yeah, just have it sitting in a little bit of acetone for 15 minutes. Then we'll put them in for a pre-bake. And so from what I've seen on other videos is if they come out and you st if any oil has come to the surface after baking at 300 for one hour, uh, then you have to start the process over again. Vapor hone it, uh, degree or degrease vapor hone, degrease again, and then acetone dip. Uh, that's the way I've been doing it anyway. So as you guys can tell, this process is very extensive. But what Cerakote does is it is extremely hard. So it's in the name, Cerakote, right? So it's ceramic coat. Uh, it's extremely hard. It's chemical resistant. And uh, it's such a very thin layer, guys. Don't even worry about like getting it inside some of the thread holes. Because it, it's not thick enough where it's going to actually block your hardware from going through like with a powder coat. So... We're going to put it to the test, you know, but we're going to let this sit for 15 minutes in this acetone bath and then I'm going to shove it in our thrift store easy bake ovens and send it. All right, girls and gargoyles. So fresh set of gloves every time I'm going to touch these from now on. So these still need to kind of set and evaporate for a minute or 12 because we're about to put them in a very hot oven. So what's going to be my cooling rack will also be the drying rack for the acetone oh, yeah baby just kind of get all the last tits and bits off of there there is metal shavings all over the ground in here that's gonna be a lot of cleanup all right that's pretty devoid so we're gonna let these sit and evaporate that for eh. 10 minutes and I'm gonna put these in my other easy bake oven up there let's go all right guys so I have the engine mounts out first I have four ounces of uh, the burnt bronze all prepped hardeners in it's been strained we're gonna fill up our little canister in here get to painting let's go all right guys Upper mounts are sprayed. Now it's time to bake. 300 degrees, one hour. And then I gotta still do the brake hanger and the, um, yeah, the brake pedal. Let's go. Here's the setup, guys. Just got the brake, hang brake hanger shot. Looks gorgeous. Let's go. Bring you back in when we're gonna take a look at these things, guys. All right, guys, so I actually went with uh, 
a matte finish a lot of guys do like a very gloss finish some do uh, like a semi gloss i went for a matte i like when it almost kind of like it looks like crystallized almost you'll see it kind of adds more of a metallic look in my mind anyway so anyways they're in for a final bake now uh it's my first time doing this so i picked on some parts that aren't as like critical if i didn't do them right so like the brake hanger cal the caliper hanger for the rear you could see it but it's not like a lot you know what i mean that's exposed uh the brake pedal was a big one because obviously you're gonna see that's gonna be like on the bike right and then engine hanger mounts when it when the bike's all together and everything they'll be up and out of the way but uh i don't think i messed up on anything though the proof will be in the pudding one definite flaw in my method here is you're supposed to have a big enough oven where you can hang dry them um not lay them on a rack like i did so i might get some little um imperfections on the back where i did very gently though lay them down on the rack uh, i think after being in contact with the rack it might rub away some color we will see anyways knowledge is power hopefully you guys learn something from this so if we do have some nicks and marks coming back when these come out then obviously look for like an electric oven something where you guys can hang them inside the oven from like a rack where they're not going to touch anything so that's the takeaway from this one uh, I know all the videos that I've seen, they all have like conventional ovens they put them in. Um, but guys, I mean, I'm kind of, as usual with this channel, I'm really trying to show you guys how to do this stuff at home uh, and not use the old lady's oven, right? So unless you can get like a cheap electric oven, throw it in the backyard, throw it in your shop garage, whatever, and do this, then I can definitely say do that. But if this works, if this works, then I spent $12 in ovens. So let's uh let's wait so it's uh it's about 525 right now see you at 625 so just because curiosity killed the cat i have a junk part and i have a little bit of ceramic coat left over that I, or a cerakote that i don't want to waste so will a torch on the part now this has been vapor home but uh this is a junk part because it had some damage when a piston let go, but this was just to, when I started uh, working with the, when I just started working with the vapor home. Just, so I'm gonna heat this up, pull any contaminants out of it, kind of off gas it. So we'll have a little bit of a way to show, you know, if you don't do this correctly, I, I have a feeling this is gonna come out really bad. But that's okay because I could just vapor hunt up back off. But I am curious. Like I've heard how clean you have to be, so I'm not gonna acetone dip this. This is just vapor hunt, it's been sitting on my shelf. Uh, this is definitely not what I'd call off gassing, though this is burning any sort of contaminant off. Uh, but I have a feeling that this ceramic uh, cerico is not gonna want to stick to this. But just because I know a lot of you guys are wondering, like, well, I don't have all the vapor hones and bead blasters, sand blasters at home. Well, let's see. Let's just see. Because I know, like, with this stuff, you have to be just so mega surface prep. So I'm going to heat this up. So I start to see some smoke come off of it, like there is now. And we'll use the remainder of my Cerakote and the gun to coat this thing. And then when the other parts ding and they're finished, uh, yeah, we'll throw this in the oven and see what the heck we get. If we get a, a nice part, then I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen, but let's find out. All right, so after a very poor off-gassing, I can feel the heat coming from it. It's definitely hot, so we're going to let this sit for a second. Uh, because I think one of the mistakes I made on the other parts that I did is I didn't let them cool enough. So we're going to give this thing a chance. And we're going to let it cool down a bit more. We'll hit it. And then uh, throw it in the oven when one of these are done and see what the heck. Alright. Temperature's come down significantly on this piece. Let's have at it, huh? I turned down my air pressure quite a bit too. I, I thought it was quite possible that was... Hitting a little too hot and heavy with the air pressure. So 
I came down on the regulator to, I think it's like 17 PSI. So far it's sticking, but I guess the real test will be when it cures. If it still looks good or not. I know you guys can barely hear me through my respirator, but safety is key, boys, when working with chemicals. Oh, yeah. Get the top here. Flip it over. If I get get all my arcs and angles. So I have motor mounts are about to kick off right now. So we'll swap this cylinder head into there. Not worried about getting it inside the spark plug hole because this stuff is like it coats down to the thousands. It's so thin. I don't know, guys. This might. This actually might come out. We might need to give this away today. We might need to give this away on the channel here. If you guys got a YZ250, this pretty much fits all years. It's a little bit damaged. Oops. A little bit damaged, but still usable. Let's go. I think that's going to work. Let's throw that in the oven and see how that comes out i don't have high hopes because we didn't do very good prep on it at all but i was just curious so i don't waste material but that actually looks pretty pretty good boys and girls i think your guy is kind of happy about that all right we're out of material let's go take out engine mounts put this in well, boys and girls, I am stoked. Look at how this thing came out. Freaking right, proper, decent, guys. Nice color. Uh, this is a brake hanger. So, yes, laying this down on the grill did leave a grill mark right there. So, I highly recommend that you guys do not do these in a toaster oven, although it works. So, let me be clear about this. So, like, here's a brake lever too, right? Um, came, out, came out good. However, I did spray it on too hot, so it's got an extremely, like, chalky finish to it. Almost feels like a chalkboard. Um, I sprayed this part too hot. Oh, head's done. Um, so, yeah, I sprayed this when it was too hot, and it just it made it react bad so this i'm gonna um vapor hone back down and do it again but this brake caliper mount like look at the comparison right so so good this came out so clean i'm so happy with this and our upper motor mounts just cherry boys just no light in here at all but they came out cherry just like this did so the only caveat was uh that brake lever did not come out as i wanted but guys check it out sarah coton i should have actually taken video when these were off um yes again little grill mark there where uh it touched the grill going in so there's a little spot right there um but you know, I planned on the side that was going to be showing to be face up. So if I did get any marks, it'd be on the back sides where you're not going to see it. But the Love Missile engine mounts are contoured and in and Cerakoted. I'm going to let that cool for a second. We'll take that out. But guys, I am so happy with how these came out. Well, boys and girls, you can't make this stuff up. So put this thing through totally dirty. I mean, I did not acetone dip it. I did not prep it at all. It was vapor honed, but I see no flaws with this at all. Um, do as I say, not as I do. This thing obviously hammered, right? So bottom end went out 
on this cylinder and there's some chunkaroos in the bottom. You still can completely use this if you see fit, uh, but I'm telling you right now that uh, it's pretty much spent. Um, it will work though. But um, this finish came out as good as the motor mounts and as good as anything else I did. And all I did was vapor hone it, hit it with the torch. Uh, and I mean, there's no, there's just no flaws. Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of shocked really. Uh, I thought this thing would bubble, reject. There'd be oils on the surface that made the paint not stick. But uh, I mean, I touch it with my finger right there. A little flaw, but Otherwise, if one of you guys want this for your YZ250, I think they fit like 99 through uh, maybe brand new. You might need to look at that. This came off of 2015. Um, if you guys want this, uh, I will absolutely send it to you. Go over to Instagram. Um, definitely like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Because if you love dirt bikes and you love doing cool stuff to dirt bikes, this is the channel for you. But if you want this... Hit me up on Instagram, and uh, we'll do a little contest. And if one of you guys want it, it's damaged. You can use it. It's there's definitely like nothing that would keep you from uh, from running this. It's just ugly inside, but a lot of people do run them like that. But it is usable and it is straight. Um, or if you just want this as a as a cool piece, little London Mex memorabilia. Um, yeah, put a little contest on Instagram. You can have it. No purchase necessary. Let's go. Kind of pumped on that. So guys, I quickly just vapor honed all the brake pieces just to show you the contrast, right? Like, that Cerakote is just prime on there, guys. Holy mackerel, that looks so good. Especially with the freshly vapor honed master cylinder and brake caliper. They just look so good. Oh. Just love it. All right, boys and girls. So, got it all back together. Uh, this definitely compels me to go a little bit further in like doing the cap um, and just really making this. You know, what I try to do with every bike I build, right, is I try to make each section kind of tell a little story. And, um, you know, Things like I know you just can't see right now, but just how that brake hanger came out. I want to do the caliper, I think, in armor black because we have that color. Um, maybe this um, master cylinder in armor black and then do like this in red cap in, I don't know, you know, maybe not red, maybe green, green here. Either way, guys, I just I want each piece to kind of tell a story. Uh, when I go to do this again, because I promise you I am, I just the finish is just so chalky. Um, I think I'm going to take the rivet out of this toe piece because, as you guys can see, the toe piece is just completely bent. And um, I know I can straighten that all out. And I would just like this piece vapor honed only. I don't want it in the Cerakote. But I have to try. I have to practice, you know. So this was a really good practice run for me. So the question of can you Cerakote inside a toaster oven, absolutely, yes you can. Caveat, as mentioned, if you guys cannot suspend the piece inside the toaster oven yourself, like from the roof of it or something like that, then you are going to get some marks from the grill. Obviously the marks on this one are on the back side, which is actually fine, right? A um, couple little strike points where it hit on the grill on the inside is really not a big deal especially because you'll never see it but things like you know uh master cylinder you could you know lay it down like this because you're really not going to see on the back but that's to me that's a little too far um i really like the look of just freshly vapor hone personally uh, just just on a personal level right i just love the clean look uh, and then especially after vapor honing the caliper, I love that hanger and the burnt bronze. But now, guys, this opens up a whole new category for me here at the shop garage, whatever, of what things I can do to continuously make the builds here that much more cool. And uh, obviously, like this case, the side case here, 
really going to think about what color is going to lend itself here best, whether it's armor black or bronze or even in looking at another color. Um, you guys might need to let me know what color you want to see the clutch cover. I'm leaning towards a burnt bronze, but then I can't do this in a burnt bronze. This would have to be a black with a silver toe piece or something like that, just to kind of give more contrast. Then things like the water inlet pipe right here, that obviously is, could be a great looking piece tied in with upper engine mounts and a burnt bronze. But guys, this really opens up a lot on this build and on the 2005 KX250 and the 98, you know, simultaneously. So I have one other piece I really want to show you guys real quick. So this next piece, guys, um, this came from a good buddy of mine uh, in the industry, known him for many, many years. Back to my first uh, project, KX500, that I did. I mean, this was probably back in 2004. Or, let's see, what year? Yeah, it was probably like 04, 05. And um, he was a great resource, a big help uh, plotting out and building it. And um, so anyways, Adam Millar up in the Canadas, uh, he sent me this for the, for the uh, Yamasaki guys. And I'm so excited because it's just, it's another thing, another thing. We keep making, oops, we keep making progress on this thing weekly, uh, getting more parts in, getting this thing closer to being finished. I'm trying to do this one hand. Just beg a pardon from me. Um, but guys, we're, we're just making such great strides with this build um, and this piece right here. So before I show you, Adam, he is really at the forefront. He, he's of, of 500 technology. He focuses more on the CR500, but he definitely has a lot of focus towards the Kawasaki 500 as well. He's invested a lot of time, resources, and guys, uh, he's come up with an amazing piece right here. So Millar Race Engineering. This, guys, is a, a reed assembly that he has manufactured. These are available. Um, some of you know him as Rustius Maximus on the forums, um, MRE on Instagram, uh, Millar en uh, Race Engines. Um, this guy, I can't say enough good things about him. So when I saw these things, they popped up on his on his Instagram feed. Uh, I just had to have it because I know that there is nothing else out there that would perform like this will, especially when we uh, pair our uh, smart carb to the backside of this thing. This this bike is just going to be a missile, and I'm really excited. Um, so, anyways, let me get this thing unpacked here because again, one-handed here, and that's uh, not a thing I'm really good at. Um, so here that's in my hands. I mean, this is just such, I could just tell even from his foes that this is one heck of a uh, engineered, you know, product from him. All CNC billet. If you guys have a KX500 or a CR500, hit up Adam Millar at Miller Race Engineering. He is a wizard uh, with these 500s and um, I had to have one. He graciously uh, sent one down, and um, I can't wait to get this thing on the bike with that new ignition, and I haven't leaked that to you guys yet. I just leaked it to you guys, but uh, with the carburetor and the pl plenum, and then this, now this reed block, um, this is going to be stellar. Uh, this bike is just going to go like a rocket, so thank you, Adam Millar. Malar Race Engineering. Really appreciate it. This is going to be such a nice um, addition to the Yamasaki. So, big, big thank you. So, guys, uh, before I button it up here for the night, if you guys want this, get over to Instagram. Look for my post. I will have a little contest. It's not a big deal, though. It's not like something... Uh, I'm just not going to make a big deal out of it. But if you want this, it's all yours. Um... Also, on the last video I did where we went and raced um, Glen Helen this last weekend at the Two Stroke World Championships, um, I put up a photo of our 99 KX250. Uh, you see it here. So, guys, 
I want to put another engine in there and I don't know what to do. So I, I always include you guys. I, I mean, I always include the YouTube fam in any one of the builds, let you guys make choices. So on this one, I'm not going to go crazy with Cerakote, powder coat, yada, yada, yada. But let's put a fun engine in there. I mean, like, let's put uh, like an electric conversion. If we do now, I did go and look at the electric conversions. They're not cheap. So if I do an electric conver conversion, I'm probably going to go insane on that thing because I, I really don't want to. I'd rather put it towards another bike, the electric conversion. But it doesn't matter what I want. It's what you guys want. So I also propose a Briggs & Stratton motor. We could put it like a Predator 212 in that thing, hype it up with like a stage three performance kit and just go nutso and make it a pull start dirt bike. I think that'd be totally funny. Uh, convert it over to a 420 uh, chain or see if there's a way that I can get it to work with the, the smaller chain. I don't know. Either way, guys, um, I want to do something like that with that parts bike um, or throw a Banshee in it throw a GSX 1000 or a, a CBR 600 RR just something nuts right just just get it done just do it it'd be so much fun um so if you guys didn't see that that video I said if if that video gets to 5,000 likes it's at like a thousand already so if you haven't seen that one go back look at that even if you don't want to watch it through give that video a like and uh we will do that here at the shop garage whatever um whatever your choice is we'll put up a little thing on the instagram where you guys can go and vote exactly what motor we are going to put in it when that video hits 5,000 likes but as for tonight guys at the shop garage whatever 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 um i'm a i'm a seracoder now yeah mess with that um definitely have a lot more practice to do um I am going to do a lot more Cerakoting on this, plus the, the 2005 KX250 project. Uh, that is going to beg a lot of Cerakote engine cases, stuff like that that aren't going to fit in our little toaster ovens. But I wanted to answer that question, could you Cerakote inside a, a toaster oven? And it worked. Absolutely, it worked. It worked uh, way good. I mean, <laughs> come on. That's so freaking cool. We got to work inside of a toaster oven. Came out good. Um so yeah guys uh like this video if you guys love dirt bikes like i said and, and doing everything with them and this crazy world we live in and this whole covid universe and elections going on and chinese people hating us now and who knows but uh one thing is for sure we love dirt bikes so if that is you subscribe uh stay tuned we got a lot more coming up next week uh it's friday so yeah it's friday still thank god um but a lot of stuff going on next week. Um, we're going to start tapping into the 98 KX250 and the 2005. Get our welding done on this. So a lot of videos to come. And then after, again, once this thing gets welded up, we are just going to full send and start getting this thing together. So anyways, from the shop garage, whatever. I love every single one of you guys. Thanks for stopping by. We'll talk to you guys soon. As promised, peace out.